So I want you guys to pay attention really quickly to this clip that I'm about to show you. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, nothing out of the ordinary really stood out to me. It looked like beautiful downtown San Francisco, the Bay Bridge during the summer. It looks like a nice day, right? But if we go back really quickly, I'm gonna have you guys focus on something else entirely different, which is this little tiny smudge right here on the glass of the car that I'm shooting from looking through at this beautiful scenery. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this little smudge right here can represent some people's perception of the world that they see through their lens or their own eyes. Now, we have something in our brains called the RAS or the Reticular Activation System, which is also known as Selective Focus. And this thing called the Selective Focus or the RAS operates as a system in our brain that helps us to only see what we are looking for. What we are looking for is therefore subjective to the way we perceive the world. So going back to the example I just used, there's two types of people in the world. There's the first person that's going to look out the window and instead of seeing the beautiful scenery around them, they're gonna focus on the smudges and the water droplets and the stains on the glass window that is bothering their eyes while they're driving and that's gonna be their focus and they're gonna stay in a pity, poopy party mood, right? And then there's that second type of person that although there's like water stains on the window and it might not be the best view, they don't even see that because they're so focused on the beauty and life around them and whatever is good in a situation. And this is something I personally struggled with for a very long time and I still struggle with it to this day, just keeping that positive outlook on everything in life and understanding that there's a good in everything and everything can be essentially reframed in your mind depending on how you view that circumstance. So for example, I was an unplanned baby, born to some parents that weren't necessarily in the best financial position and the rest of the family didn't want to have a baby born in the family at that time. And I also had Asperger's and ADHD and I was a hyperactive kid that was up all night, I was a night terror, and I struggled to fall asleep. So I was quite the headache to introduce to the family that was already kind of opposed to having a baby in the family. And unfortunately, well I should say, actually it's fortunately when I reframe it and I look back at how that actually helped me, what that caused was me to subconsciously feel like I was kind of like a burden to my family and in order to like prove my love to them, I had to make something of myself and always constantly people please. So I became like a massive people pleaser. I became someone that was very insecure. I had a speech impediment because of this because I was constantly just trying to walk on eggshells to be a perfect human being for the rest of my family that already was stressed out by bringing me into the world. And because that formed at such an early age, my RAS or my selective focus focused on those qualities of I need to people please and I need to prove that I'm actually worthy of love. So then this need for love from people that didn't necessarily love me and people pleasing, that translated over into grade school where I would have crushes and really like certain girls that I knew were at the time I thought were like out of my league and actually treated me like garbage. Like I remember this one girl, we'll just call her Emily. She was playing on the playground one time, playing basketball or whatever. And at the time I'm this really skinny, nerdy, insecure kid with mild Asperger's and ADHD. And I walk over to her and I'm trying to play with her and kind of flirt or whatever I thought that was. And she just pushes me down and pretty much takes the ball away from me. Kids are laughing. Uh, I got bullied a lot in school, so I think that also is something that I kind of ran towards once my RAS had flipped and I focused on literally trying to people please to people that didn't necessarily like me. And while all those things were negative and that, that eventually carried over into high school and me wanting certain girls that I knew were not interested in me or I, was, I had these little crushes on people that I knew just were gonna treat me badly or cheat on me, and yes, that eventually did happen. Um, I sort of just ran towards those things because my focus or my RAS, my selective focus, was dialed in on people pleasing and looking for relationships that would hurt me because I felt like deep down inside, I was needing to be worthy of love because I didn't receive necessarily the affection and the love from my dad or who, whoever it may be in my family when I was growing up. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can maybe relate to this if you look back at your own life, you know, depending on how you were raised and the circumstances around that, 
um, how your parents brought you up, you might be automatically, without even necessarily being aware of it, gravitating towards people, places, and situations, circumstances that aren't healthy for you because that's just what you maybe saw modeled for you when you were younger or that's like a deep-rooted insecurity that you never really worked out and that's something that I still struggle with to this day and I have to hold myself accountable to that. But the main thing that I really want you to know and something that's dramatically helped me is understanding that yes, those terrible things might have happened and they seemed horrible at the time, you were bullied, um, you might have felt insecure growing up, you might have had terrible things happen to you, but at the same time, it's those things that happen to you that you can use to then reframe and develop into the character and the personality that you are now that's super resilient and self-reliant and actually gains strength from one's own core self of just being. And that's like at a higher level you get to that point where you realize you don't need the validation of the people around you or the external circumstances, but it's just your one-on-one -on -one core understanding of your presence being here as a as a being, I know this sounds kind of woo-woo, but you're connected to a higher purpose for a higher reason and you're here for a reason and you have that relationship with the infinite or God. And if you don't believe in God, you're here as just a core essence, as a spirit, in order to progress on your soul's journey here. So my main question to you is, looking back at your childhood and then comparing that to the adult and the situation, circumstances you're in right now in your life, what are the things that happened when you were younger that maybe have led up to the point where you are now? And what can you use and find out of that, even if it was a terrible situation, what can you focus on that was good in that situation? For me, it was that I had to find a core essence within myself and a love for myself because I went through so much pain from trying to people please that it helped me become more of a self-reliant, independent person that wasn't focused on external validation. And I see a lot of people focused on that nowadays and because I went through so much of getting burned and rejected over time and crying, literally spending nights crying and just being bullied and miserable that I had to grow out of that and eventually evolve. And I know that you can do the exact same thing. So let me know in the comment section below, are you someone that focuses, do you think, on the little stains in the window while you're looking out? Or are you someone that focuses on the beautiful scenery and what life has to offer to you? And are you able to reframe terrible situations into situations that are more filled with opportunity and hope for who you're becoming? Let me know in the comment section below.